Hi guys, it's James here from Optics Warehouse, your night vision and hunting specialist. And today, yes, I have in front of me some day scopes. I know that may shock a few of you. However, this is more focusing on the hunting aspect of the uh, side of things today. So we're looking here at some of the, probably the best stalking scopes on the market at the moment. Uh, we've just had a, a decent delivery of Schmidt and Bender turn up. So I just thought I'd run for you a couple of options aimed at different price points, uh, aimed at different capabilities as well. So um, those of you who may have heard me obviously speak in, in videos before, yes I do quite a lot of nighttime and fox shooting as well but one of my other passions is I do a lot of deer stalking. Uh, I'm quite, uh, quite keen to have a nice deer stalking rifle and a nice bit of glass on top. Um, I'm currently running something else, however seeing these Schmidt and Benders that have come in now um, I might be, uh, might be tempted to get something else instead. So what have we got here in front of us? Well, I've got two of the Schmidt & Bender Classics models and then I've also got the Schmidt & Bender Polar T96, which is uh, one of their sort of flagship hunting rifle scopes. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go through uh, the three scopes I have here in front of me, out outlining obviously what the pros may be, uh, depending on your price point, your needs, all that sort of stuff, and what exactly you gain from each, um, from each scope. But as a general consensus, I will say this, all of these scopes here, they have fantastic superior glass quality, seen right at the top of the range uh, in terms of hunting optics available on the market. You're gonna get sort of low to mid 90s in terms of transmission of light, really allowing you to work, work that hour before sunrise and that hour before sunset very well indeed to, to harvest as much quarry as you possibly require, um, which obviously it does make the difference as a lot of deer stalkers will know out there uh, between seeing maybe between seeing maybe like one or two to now actually seeing like say five or ten because obviously that's the sort of times we know they like to come out. So we will start with the uh, the classic 3 to 12 by 50. Uh, a lot of you are, I'm sure aware of the Schmidt and Bender classic 8 by 56 which is I will quite easily say the quintessential stalking scope nice and easy 8 by 56 as it says fixed at 100 yard parallax um, nice and simple point and shoot second focal plane nothing too complicated about it. In the classic range, of course, you now have more versatility as well. And I'm just going to start here with the 3 to 12 by 50. And as you can see here, this is probably the most compact out of the range. Not too long at all, so you can add it to multiple different rifle setups. You've still got a decent amount of scope mounting space on the front and the back. More so on the back there, I would say certainly, to allow you to then adjust to where you need to be. So maybe if you've got a, a smaller stalking rifle, should we say, maybe you've got like a 243, 6.5 Creedmoor, maybe even a short barrel 270, something like that, this is probably going to suit the aesthetic more as well as having a high grade optic on it. You're looking at a fixed parallax here of 100 meters. Um, obviously being European, it's all worked in meters and centimeters. And you've got these capped turrets on here as well um, to allow you to adjust accordingly. Each click is one centimeter, 100 meters, so nice and simple, easy peasy. Nothing really to, nothing really else to, to go further in that. And obviously once you adjust it, you then simply just put the cap back on top and away you go comes in two different reticle options. You can get them in the L7 or the L3, and all that means it depends on how far thick you want the um, the X and the negative Y axis to be, how close you want that to be to the reticle, depending on what, uh, what you want. As I say as well, you've also got an illuminated uh, reticle center dot on there as well to really help you, especially in those low, low, low light situations. Easy mounting, nice and compact, knurled, um, knurled magnification, so it's easy to, to scroll through, etc., and find where you need to go and a nice ocular adjustment there. Again, nice simple scope, um, not as simple as the 8x56 perhaps because it's got the variable magnification and the illumination, although you can get illumination on some 8x56s, but as a nice compact high quality glass, then the classic 3 to 12 by 50 is certainly the place to start. So if you want, a bit more light dispersion so we say and you want a more of a, a longer looking scope but in the same range also just a, a, a little bit difference in the price as well then you want to have a look at the two and a half to ten by 56. Yes you get uh, a little less magnification obviously starting with a lower base mag of two and a half rather than three and goes up to ten rather than twelve but you still have that 30 mil tube either side a bit more on the front this time because it is that longer chassis there uh, and of course you've got the 56 mil objective as well it really draws in the light and amplifies that sort of high 90% percentage on the uh, terms of transmission on there. Again, fixed parallax at 100 meters, and I won't take the co uh, covers off, but it's exactly the same as the other classic as well. Again, nice knurling on the back there for the magnification and ocular adjustment as well. Nice, simple scope. 
What I will say as well, with, with all these goats I show here, they do all come with bikini covers as well, so it's easy to obviously stop the egress of dirt and all that sort of stuff uh, when obviously you're out and about or when you're storing it in your cabinet. But yeah, spend a bit more money uh, than you might get the obviously the, uh, the two and a half to 10 by 56. Um, as I say, nice, nice simple scope, has a real classic look, hence the name to it, uh, and would actually complement quite a lot of, uh, lot of stalking rifles. So now we move on to one of the flagship of the Schmidt and Bender hunting range, uh, and that is the Polar T96. The other, of course, is the Exos. I don't actually have one here, unfortunately, but that comes. The Exos comes in a three to twenty-one magnification. Straight away, you'll notice much bigger profile on here. Uh, larger tube. Obviously, you've still got a decent amount of room on there. But what you do have is you do have an adjustable parallax on it in the form of a side focus. You've got right the way down to 30 meters here, up to infinity, of course, allowing you to adjust. Uh, if you do have that bit of extra time, adjusting your target, get absolutely crystal clear uh, in terms of your, terms of your um, target. What it also has, as well as obviously having the illumination there on the side, it has what's known as this ASV style turret on the top. So as you notice, all you do is you can simply click, it's got a bit of a tactile click to it, and when you've set your zero, you can actually loosen the grub screws here, take it off the top, put it on zero, and then use this really neat little feature, which I really like about Schmidt and Benders, is simply just click that one round to the side, and that locks the turret for you, easy peasy. And then if you're out and about and you notice that that's moved slightly and that's off zero, it's really easy to adjust back to it. So you can see, I can't move that at all there, but then if I move the lever back round, there you go, and it's back onto zero, away you go. Really nice, easy setup to zero. Uh, and then on the side, you've got your windage turret, which of course is capped because generally, if you're out stalking, you're not gonna be adjusting your windage that much, you're just gonna compensate for it. Move on the side, and you've got your standard like classic style, um, classic style um, turret on there. With again, one click is a, a centimeter, a hundred meters, as it is with the elevation turret. But again, really nicely engineered. You see, you saw how easy it was for me to put that back on there. Really simple stuff from Schmidt and Bender. Four to sixteen times magnification, so you got quite a high base mag with that one. But of course, if you've got four times base mag, you're shooting at say a large red at 70 meters, you're gonna get the majority of your, your objective there filled up, uh, especially with that 56 mil, allowing you again to draw more light, high transmission. Now, in terms of the reticle, I will say on, on this one, it, the Exos is second focal plane, so what I haven't touched on is both these classics are first focal plane. Now that's something you may want to think, oh hang on, why would I want first focal plane when it comes to stalking, because obviously, as you magnify in, the reticle gets larger and that red dot may get a bit bigger, but trust me, it does help when it comes to that sort of situation. So these classics being first focal plane do allow you to then really have that sort of maybe potentially aim small, miss small philosophy uh, that we may have seen in a few action movies and all that sort of stuff. Um, but the Exos here being the bigger scope with the slightly better transmission on with the bigger, bigger objective and bigger tube, this is the sort of the flagship, so it's inherently gonna cost a bit more money. Uh, but if you're a serious stalker, then this is going to be your uh, this is going to be your your um, more versatile piece of kit to go for. Now, if you're looking at these and thinking, right, okay, I'm quite happy with that. I want a nice piece of glass. Maybe in the future, I want to go for like a front or rear mounted add-on. I will say this with Schmidt and Bender being a European German glass, don't go for rear mounted add-ons because unfortunately they won't work with the infrared coming through. However. You can, with all of these, because they are alone base magnification, you can put a front mounted add-on. You may struggle a bit with the Polar because it's got four times base mag, uh, allowing you only to go up to sort of six, six and a half, but you will still be able to use it quite easily. All of these scopes here, um, you should be, able to, should be able to play with. The classics, you might struggle slightly, however, because you're focusing the front, um, the front add-on to the scope, shouldn't be too much of an issue. Even though these are these are fixed parallax, but with the uh, with the polar, it certainly wouldn't be an issue at all. So, I hope I've not bored you too much. I've just briefly gone through a few of the new Schmidt and Benders that we have here. Uh, I'm certainly excited to see our Schmidt and Bender profile getting bigger. Um, it's certainly an exciting brand to be working with. Uh, they are high quality European glass. Um, so we're going to be seeing a lot of positive feedback from this. Um, watch out for this channel. Obviously, we've uh, we've got some more of the PM2s coming in. So obviously, uh, keep an eye out. Sean will be on here soon talking about some PM2s so you can have a look at. He knows a lot more about the target shooting stuff than I do. Um, but if you've got any questions, as always, don't forget to link, subscribe, leave your comments below. We're always more than happy to help. Always, if you just want to drop us a phone call, drop us an email, I can more than happy talk you through the range here. Um, 
and obviously help you decide as to what might be best for you. Now the question you might want to ask is what would I choose personally as a stalking scope? Well, if I was, if, if money was no object, then yes, obviously I'd be going for the Polar T96. But because of thinking the amount of stalking that I do, uh, I've got a nice classic rifle, a nice classic 270. I want a classic look to it, then I would go for the 2.5 to 10 by 56. And I choose the 56 just because it's got that bigger objective, uh, just more light to come through. So I think uh, that is probably the one I'd go for. Nice, simple scope, easy to use, where you go, point and shoot. Hope you've enjoyed the video guys. Uh, I've been James, your night vision and hunting specialist, and this has been another video from Optics Warehouse.